it's been a while. I wanted to check in with you all. Um, things are still messed up. Uh, COVID is not cured, not vaccinated. The numbers are not going down. But people are lowering their guard. Their numbers are spiking. Not only are businesses opening, but customers are not wearing masks, they're not keeping social distance, they're acting like it's over. I don't know if it's America or human, but we have such a short attention span for caring about things. We forget our history, we forget our fight. There's another fight going on right now. Black, Black Lives Matter is a movement. Antifa is a movement. And there have been protests, and there have been riots, and there have been changes, and there has been progress, and there are places where um, the police seem to be proving that they're not corrupt and unnecessarily violent toward black people by being corrupt and unnecessarily violent toward black people. That's a fight, too. That's going to go longer than the pandemic. But there's progress. And the other day... Hi, Bryce. The other day, uh, we got good news from the Supreme Court, of all things, which I'd kind of given up hope on for a while. It seems like everyone but Brett Kavanaugh thinks that discriminate, discriminating against people in the realm of health care is a bad idea. Well, fuck him. Um, but he's still on the Supreme Court for life. Um, I honestly think some kind of term limit might be a good idea. I don't know. There's nothing we do for life. This is the only thing. Um, but I, I guess that was put in place so that uh, there would be no campaigning for re-election and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. But it's still rough times. And during all this... The things I do seem entirely frivolous. It's Maslow's Pyramid, right? The Pyramid of Needs. You need air. If you don't have air, you're not so much worried about getting a drink of water. You need air and water. If you don't have those, you're not so much worried about getting food. If you have, if you need, uh, if, if you don't have food, then you're less worried about shelter. And if you don't have shelter, then, then other kinds of safety and, and care um, and art is way high on the list. And I know we can uh, tell the story of the grasshopper and the ants, and we can tell stories about how art saves lives. Um, and I don't think these are untrue stories. But it's hard to feel... like anything I do is important right now, because... as a society, as a culture, as a species, we're fighting for pure survival right now. If I improve the quality of an interactive art installation, does it do anything to help us survive? I mean, I suppose it helps quality of life of those who do survive. I suppose. Or quality of life of those who aren't going to survive. 
Here are the things that I do. I work for a haunted house where I'm in a management position and my primary focus is actor training. I work for an interactive art installation where I help run the place, I help with a bit of the design and creation, and I specialize in character development and creation for um, some, some new things that are coming down the line. I review horror movies for a website, and um, in my reviews I kind of specialize in character. I write novels which are in limbo. They're not going anywhere. About once every few years I, I pitch them around because I'm cowardly about the things I create. I help run the tech for virtual shows, both magic shows and a couple variety shows. Uh, I love my variety shows, and they just feel so frivolous right now. And I wouldn't allow anyone else to talk like this about what they do, but it's how I feel about what I do. And uh, this last weekend I, I went to a theme park and I sort of fell in love with parts of it, and I thought maybe I want to be part of this. But it's all the same stuff. It's all, you know, bread and circus. It's all distraction from a rough reality, which isn't a bad thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But coupled with a society that doesn't seem to want to care for more than a couple weeks about anything, it's going to get bad, people. It's going to get bad. We started to make progress and then stopped caring, and now our numbers are spiking. I'm super afraid that the progress we're making with Black Lives Matter um, and associated causes is going to do the same. I have a pretty vivid imagination, and so when the question of what's the worst that can happen comes up, I can think of some pretty vivid possibilities, and I can be very analytical. I find it helpful to go whimsically overboard. What's the worst that could happen? Aliens obliterate us. Um, cockroaches gain sentience and become overlords. That sort of thing. But I think the worst that can happen is a return to complacency about death and dying. As long as business rolls on, it's okay for people to die. That may not be all the way where we were, but it was pretty close. And of the opposing forces right now, that is one of the biggest. The force of complacency about other people dying. There's a fight going on. There's multiple fights going on. There's fights in legislature, there's fights in education, there's fights in entertainment, and there's fights in the streets. And I think change requires multiple tracks. It's not all going to happen through legislation, it's not all going to happen through education campaigns, and it's not all going to happen through marching in the streets. It's not all going to happen through violence and looting, but I think, honestly, all of that is necessary to
to make real change. This is Pride Month, which brings to mind Stonewall, which was a riot of many days, a riot against police brutality, a riot against a society that felt that gay and trans people were criminal by their very existence. A society where police could arrest you for being gay or for wearing the wrong gender's clothing. And your picture would be in the paper the next day. And you could lose your job and you could lose your home. You could lose your life. And one day it was too much. And the people fought back. And it wasn't legislators. And it wasn't educators. It wasn't people who were loudly proclaiming, we're just like you. It was people who just had had enough. And that's where we're at. And it's going to take time. And the fight is, boy, it's going strong. If, you, if you're not looking at only the, um, the news, you can see pictures of uh, Seattle, San Francisco, L.A., uh, New York, um, uh, uh, Michigan. The, there are still people thronging the streets. And for the most part, the movement is really intersectional. Um, I might be in a bit of a liberal bubble here, but uh, when I see the streets full of people wearing white in support of trans black lives mattering, that's heartening. And on the very same day, black people are still getting killed by police, by... They're, they're lynchings. And it seems like just yesterday there was a debate about whether lynching should be considered a federal crime or not. The pendulum of history swings. And it's swinging pretty hard right now. It's, it's kind of swinging in both directions, which is wild. It's chaotic. It's, it's I guess, I mean, to be fair, a pendulum doesn't have to be in a two-dimensional space, so, you know, it can, I don't know, it's spinning. And it's in response, in part, to the progress we've made recently. And they're still making on some level. And I try to hold out hope, but I know that the pendulum of history is long. But things move faster now than they used to. I mean, there are things that used to be true for hundreds of years at a time, and now, um, you know, sometimes things just take a few years. I mean, the stuff we're fighting now, it's, I mean, it's the remnant of a 400-year-old system, but the last vestiges of that system are still with us. Um, the, the Civil War was not that long ago. The last citizen who was drawing a, a, a Civil War pension just died like a week ago. You know, she's drawing a pension for her father, but that's recent, folks. So... In the long swing of history, we're not doing too bad, but fucked if we should keep going without change, without transformation, if you want to be a bit clearer, because change can be incremental, and unfortunately it's what we do most often. We'll, we'll take two or three steps and go, that's good enough, we made progress, yay, let's have another parade. But what we need is transformation. And I think we can do it. And there's 
so much energy and so much fight, and it's not leaving people behind. I mean, there's some pushback, right? Um, it's it's almost comical when when someone says trans Black Lives Matter to have some of the cis um, Black Lives Matter people saying, "Wait, this is not the time. You're you're dividing us," and like it's exactly the same rhetoric that you hear from the All Lives Matter people. But they're getting shouted down. Um, the movement is a movement. Antifa is a movement. Um, and I stress it that, that way on purpose, because Antifa, you can sort of pretend is a made-up word, but Antifa um, really kind of underscores that it's anti-fascism, or anti-fa, actually, I guess. Um, which is not a gang, it's not an organization, it's a movement. Just sing a few bars of Alice's Restaurant when it comes around. No, wait. That's another movement. What's going to come of it? I don't know. Less prison. Less militarized police. More education. More health care. I mean, Jesus. If this pandemic came on and nothing else happened, our entire culture is getting PTSD. I suspect there's another name for it when it's almost the right... It's, it's not... It's not being maladaptive, it's not an illness, but it's like the right reaction. But it's still something that has to be dealt with. And what are we going to do? I mean, fuck, we don't even have Mr. Rogers. And there's no sign of any good protest songs coming out. Um, I guess... little heavy right now. Um, hope is a vital nutrient. Yeah. Not Sherry. Hi. You and my mom saved my life. And um, when I'm feeling at my lowest, I remember that. Because um, if I don't have good logical reasons to hang in there, then slightly more emotional one is I don't want you to have wasted your work so good stuff good stuff the uh, Supreme Court says um, you can't be uh, the, the anti-discrimination laws count for, for queer and trans people that's good right in the face of Brett Kavanaugh who can just suck a dick um, the ban on assault weapons was the, the, the SCOTUS chose not to rule on it. Uh, it's funny with what's going on now um, people are kind of forgetting that gun violence is still an issue and it's still happening. Uh, it's just getting less news coverage. Boy oh boy if anything good comes out of this um, holding news media accountable would be a lovely step in the right direction because that will help fuel everything else. <sighs> Holding anyone accountable, honestly, would be great. What else is good? Um, around here, things are opening up fairly carefully um, because Utah has good testing. Um, it's a shit show here. It's terrible. I... I don't know. I, I feel really conflicted. Because I, I love that things are opening up. I love that things are happening. I love that people are... Um, taking steps to create their life again after having it on hold for so long. I don't think it's safe yet. And I don't think everyone that's opening up is taking the level of care they need to. My my creative performer friends will hug. Oh, it scares me. 
I don't want them to be taking that risk. And the part of me that kind of gets hung up on rules also gets really angry. <laughs> Breaking the fucking rules. You know these fucking rules. You've known these rules for months. But your, your, your need for... But I can be cold-hearted, you know. I don't generally have a need for a hug. I'm not a cuddly person. So, you know, I can empathize with human needs overwhelming um, theoretical or potential or probable risks as opposed to in-your-face risks. You know, if there's a saber-toothed tiger coming at you, you're not going to pause for a hug, but if you could possibly get sick in a couple of weeks and possibly a certain percent chance, you know, get really sick from it, it's a lot harder to stay careful in the face of that. I I don't know what you're specifically responding to when you say even no way Maine, but I, I, I miss Maine. And I know it's a mess there too, in different ways, and to different degrees. Someone recently said that America is the Florida of the world. <laughs> kind of seems that way. Uh, what I would love to see is the rhetor rhetoric of leader of the free world. No, I'm sorry. We're not, we're not the leaders of the free world. We're just some people in the world. We don't even know what freedom means. We don't know what liberty means. We, we idolize it in, in our rhetoric, but we don't know what it means. Freedom isn't an absolute thing that, that, that comes down in a golden orb and it either is or it isn't. It's freedom to do things. It's liberty to do things. You don't have absolute liberty. No one ever has absolute liberty. I don't have the liberty to put my hand in the fire and not, not have consequences for it. Um, so treating liberty like an absolute is just fucked up. Um, the, the, the promise is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I, I think the order of those is important. Um, you, your, your liberty and pursuit of happiness don't trump my life. Your pursuit of happiness doesn't trump my liberty. But hey, you can storm the Bastille with, with weapons uh, because you need haircuts. You have no idea how privileged you are to be able to have gotten away with that. Oh my fucking god. It's insane how obvious and transparent things are right now. Um, it, it is so transparent right now, uh, which in a way is a good thing, but are people seeing it? I mean, no matter how transparent you make it, no matter how clear it's showing itself, are enough people going to see it and remember it? I don't know. This is work that's been going on for some time, and it happens in waves, and What are good things? Um, people are supporting each other. People are checking in on each other. Um, even though things are relaxing somewhat, people are still um, concerned and watching out for each other. People are understanding if you're saying, oh, I, I'm having an I can't leave the house day. I get that. Um, when I go out into the world and I take the appropriate amount of care, I stay in my mask, I keep six feet apart, I don't touch things with my hands without sanitizing, part of me expects to be mocked for that. Because so many people have decided that they are not going to do any of that. But for the most part, people seem to respect it. Like your mask is now new small talk. It's kind of cool. 
Um, I think I'm super duper lucky. I'm lucky I live somewhere where my bizarre little frivolous activities can actually um, keep, keep me fed. My landlord just raised the rent by a significant amount and I'm bitter about that. And I think in other states it would not have been allowed right now, uh, but in Utah Landlords, they get all the rights, Utah. Um, but I can do these things. I can do these weird niche, 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 niche. I haven't come to a consensus within myself how to pronounce that word, but these weird niche things. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm lucky that I work with people that can understand if I'm having a hard time. I'm lucky that, for the most part, everything I do has a certain amount of flexibility. I'm lucky I have the support of an amazing fiancé, and we've been affianced for six or seven years. And I kind of want to complete on that well, there's a pandemic. <sighs> but we've spent more time together, and that's cool. Um, what else is good? I mean, my apartment's cool. Even with a rent hike, it's it's good for what it is. It's it's roomy. Um, I have I have the ability to live here and um, people to share the, the weight of the place. I get so sick of very basic roommate bullshit like not loading the dishwasher. You know, the stuff. You've had roommates before. If you haven't, gosh, you should try it because you will never, never understand what a joy living by yourself or living... Um, among people who are on the same page about how to keep a household is until you've lived in a situation where that's not the case. Freedom equals eight brands of deodorant to choose from. That's what it seems to mean to a lot of people. Yeah. And when my mental illness is giving it to me at its worst, um, going to the grocery store and seeing eight brands of something will actually cause me to panic uh, because I get hung up on the right. I've got to find the right thing. There, there's got to be a formula or something. The toilet paper aisle is um, the worst. Cause there's so, the toilet paper math is weird. Um, someone could write a treatise on it. You know, like you've got this number of rolls for this amount of money but this roll has more sheets than this roll. But this roll has more plies than this roll. And if you buy really low quality toilet paper, you wind up having to use more of it. And ooh, and what is the price value of having a comfortable bottom? <laughs> so when I'm struggling, that can be tough. The, the, the things that we want can actually make life harder for us. Uh, And I absolutely have wonderful aunts. I have a couple of them. And I miss my family in Maine. And I miss Maine. And I've been contemplating lately whether we could create our life in other places. Jake has transferable skills. I have weird skills, but um, I don't know. I've been in, in, in Salt Lake City for like a decade now. I still don't really like it. I think, I think it's got some things going for it. It's got a, an underground performing arts scene that's pretty cool. Um, 
but it's really straight-jacketed by, by local laws and culture. Um, I think Salt Lake City is, is kind of the most progressive part of the state, but even so, an awful lot of Utah is run by, if not church people, by people who are part of the culture of the church, which... Um, I want to be diplomatic here, but um, there's an attitude that comes with certain religions and certain um, subsets of religions that God will bless you if you're good. Therefore, if things are going bad for you, there's something wrong with you. Um, this is... Uh, attack on to the health and wealth doctrine that, that a lot of televangelists are big on. Um, but being poor it kind of becomes a moral failing. Being sick kind of becomes a moral failing. Um, and the, the response uh, sometimes uh, seems to be, you know, let them suffer. They don't deserve help. Uh, yeah. Things aren't terrible. Um, my my sense of smell is starting to come back. The um, the steroid nasal spray seems to be reducing inflammation in the internal structures of my sinuses, which seems to be uh, improving uh, my anosmia um, and parosmia. So um, I'm getting more smells and more tastes back week by week. Um, some of them are still fucked up, though. Coffee still tastes like burnt jalapeno. Um, chlorine is so strong to me that, I mean, it doesn't smell like chlorine to me, but I, by process of elimination, I figured out that that's what it is. And it's overwhelming sometimes when other people can't smell it at all. And then I get phantom smells, uh, you know, what was that? And I ask around, what does this room smell like to you? And it doesn't smell like anything. Um, the bathroom at work smells like wet cedar chips to me. Um, but apparently that's just poop. But my bathroom here doesn't smell like that, so I, I think there's an element missing. Maybe there's a giant hamster there. Um, I always used to have a really delicate sense of smell. I would smell things other people couldn't smell, and, and it was... Um, verifiable. So that potentially is going to make it harder for me to figure out what I'm smelling because I might be picking up something that other people aren't smelling anything. So let me wrap this up. I started out with a, a fairly somber speech and then I got a little disjointed and tried for positivity. Um, keep creating Keep loving, keep trying, and keep taking care of yourself. And if you can't do as much as you think you should be doing, cut that out. Cut yourself slack. Not everybody can do everything. And there's a fight going on. There's a couple different fights going on right now. And if you can be on the front lines, then do it and do your research so you can do it safely. Uh, but if all you can do is sign petitions or, or make Facebook posts to, to create conversations or make speeches on Facebook Live um, or make fatuous paintings or, or frivolous art, um, you've got to keep us alive as a species and keeping our culture alive is part of that even if some parts of our culture really need to be cut out and excised um, I guess on that cheery note I'll wrap it up um, as with the other ones when it's done processing I'm going to um, upload it to my uh, YouTube channel as well. Uh, by the way, um, the other thing I do is uh, the variety shows 
and, and the improv classes, they're on hold. Possibly July, possibly August, possibly not till next year. Um, I'm not going to revive them until it's safe to do so. And I mean safe, safe. Um, I might pursue another virtual show down the line if, it, if it's going to be a long haul, and I think it is. Um, I, I think it might be a multi-year pandemic, honestly. Um, unless we get a really good vaccine and people fucking take it. Um, it could last a really long time. Uh, but hang in there. Um, keep inviting me to things. Percentage of the time I actually will do that. Um, but I'm going to leave my mask on and I'm not going to hug you. Sorry. Um, as much as I, I'm really sick of having my lower face steamed up, that mask is going to stay on. Um, and I'm going to take care. And if I'm taking more care than everyone else in the room, uh, the part of me that doesn't want to be the weirdo in the room is going to have to have a fight about that. It's just the way it's going to be. I love you. Um, I do. Even though some of you are assholes. You may not even know who you are, but guaranteed some of you are assholes. Um, and maybe not even in a cute way. Um, I don't know who all watches these videos, but there are people on my friends list. Um, yeah. I am pacifist by nature, as far as physical violence. Um, but some of the events of the last four or five years have really increased my urge to punch people in the throat and tell them to fuck off instead of trying to educate them nicely and diplomatically. So you might be one of those people. You're safe. The, ur the urge is there, but I have a lifetime of training in not following through on those urges um, ever since the days in my adolescence when I used to scare myself when I'd get angry and Ooh, no need to be going into that when I'm trying to sign off. Um, do something unusual and watch uh, Taskmaster on YouTube. It's a great show and um, it'll uh, give you something to do.